I've been conducting research on warnings and product labeling for over 20 years. I served as an advisor for the Framework Connection Tobacco Control to the World Health Organization. And I've also testified in legal challenges to warnings, and I bring that to, to this talk. Um, I'm going to cut right to the chase. You know, we sometimes talk as if we're, we're forging new ground. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of studies that have established the basic scientific principles of product labeling and warnings. And one of the most basic concepts is that labels should feature images that are simple and intuitive. This ensures that they're noticed and they're understood at a glance. And that's true whether we're talking about traffic signs, warnings for occupational hazards in the workplace, or FOP nutrition labels. In fact, it's especially true for FOPs, which are relatively small, and they must communicate simple and interpretive messages in a very brief amount of time. Now, as you already heard and then discussed, and as most of you are aware, there are different symbols being used in different countries, including symbols uh, that are based on traffic lights or different types of rating systems. Now, there's evidence that most of these can be effective in certain contexts, but I'd like to point out two clear findings from the scientific evidence. And the first one is that FOP systems that focus primarily on nutrient numbers are the least effective. We already have the labels on the back or the side of package for that. This type of FOP fails both the principles of being simple and intuitive, and most importantly, it fails with regards to equity and impact among lower socioeconomic consumers. The second finding that I'd like to highlight is that octagon FOPs are the most effective for informing consumers and for helping them to reduce the intake of foods of nutri nutrients of concern, salt, sugar, et cetera. And that's largely because the octagon uses a well-established symbol of a stop sign, which is universally recognizable regardless of language, culture, or literacy level. Now, I've specifically been asked to talk about what uh, some people refer to as the Canadian magnifying glass. Now, first, I'd like to clarify that Canada has not selected the magnifying glass as the symbol for its FOP standard. In fact, nothing's been selected to date. They're still in that process. Rather, the magnifying glass was a suggestion from industry and was included in a consultation that Health Canada has conducted. Now, what do we know about the magnifying glass? Well, we've conducted an experiment after it was proposed by the industry in Canada, and we wanted to see how well it helped consumers to identify foods high in sugar and saturated fat. We've published this. What did we find? What we found is that the magnifying glass performed the worst of all the warnings we tested consumers were least likely to be able to correctly identify which foods were high in sugar and saturated fat. What about the octagon labels in the same study? They were significantly more effective than the magnifying glass. And at the end of this experiment, um, we asked the consumers in our study, which of these is the best symbols uh, for uh, helping you identify a product that's high in certain nutrients of concern? And this is what we found. Um, the magnifying glass performed the worst of all the different versions that were under consideration by Health Canada, and the octagons were rated as the most effective. Um, now, one of the things that's happened in Canada is that the industry has argued that octagons uh, should not be implemented, mainly because consumers would find them too harsh. Well, we empirically tested this claim in a different published study, and we put the question directly to consumers. And in fact, we found very high levels of support for the octagons. 90% of Canadians said the octagon was either the right strength or it should be even stronger. And we've replicated this finding in six different countries. In short, there is no evidence to the claims that consumers don't like this or find it too harsh. The opposite is the case. Um, and I know that one of the themes today is human rights and especially addressing inequities in diet nutrition. And to that end, it's important to point out that octagon FOPs not only have the strongest empirical support, they've also been shown to reduce disparities among consumers from lower socioeconomic groups. That's among the highest priorities for nutrition labeling policies and the octagons check that box. Now, overall, I have no uh, doubt concluding that there is little or no scientific basis for selecting a magnifying glass symbol for FOPs. While there are dozens of studies on octagons and their impact on consumer behavior, including real naturalistic studies in countries like Chile, there's almost no published literature on the magnifying glass other than what I shared today, which shows that it's less effective. And I'd like to make one last final point. 
This is potentially important if the industry issues a legal challenge to FOP regulations. They have threatened to do this in Canada and other countries. And I can tell you as someone who's testified as an expert witness in cases around the world, that it would be very hard for a government to defend choosing the magnifying glass over an octagon based on any scientific evidence. Um, so that's all for me today. Thanks for your time. And I'd be pleased to answer any questions now or at the end of the session.